And as a former systems analyst and computer programmer, I'm specifically concerned about uh, your software capabilities, its susceptibilities to hackers, and their ability to disrupt or disable an aircraft. Thank you. I'd like to have you think of the, uh, the weapon system in two pieces. The first piece is the airplane itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I can assure you, and we can't talk about it here very much, but I can assure you that um, the ability of this airplane to withstand software vulnerabilities from the airplane perspective is unmatched in the Department of Defense. We knew when we started designing this airplane in 2001, it would be exported to other nations and other places. So we built in the special ways to protect the airplane. I have very, very, very little concern about the airplane itself. I have a much greater concern about the, what we call the off-board systems, the maintenance system and the mission planning system, because those systems connect to other networks right. in DOD and with our partners, and all of those networks become vulnerable. But what I will tell you is, we've undergone over 150 vulnerability and penetration yeah. tests on our maintenance system and on our off-board mission planning system, and we found some things, and we're fixing them. Some of that money I talked about that I have to right. spend right. extra, goes to the very heart of the cybersecurity issues that we've discovered that we have to improve for our off-board systems. What I can tell you is this is not something that the department is taking lightly. We have the best experts in the department trying to penetrate the system and showing us how to fix it, and we are in the process of fixing it. And, and in another forum, ma'am, I'd like to be able to, to show you and tell you a little more about that. Thank you. I look forward to that, and I yield back my time. Thank you. So General Harris and, uh, and uh, General Bogdan, I, I come from the Emerging Threats and Capability Subcommittee where I serve as the, as the ranking member, uh, where cybersecurity is one of our, our highest priorities. Mm -hmm. um, so many have been critical of cybersecurity inadequacies uh, within the F-35 program, and I understand that the, the technology uh, advancements in fifth generation fighters uh, will be operating on a netted enterprise that, rely, uh, that will rely upon advanced systems for data links, uh, target mapping systems, the, uh, and uh, C2 uh, that could be vulnerable to cyber attacks. So obviously it's imperative that we understand the cybersecurity requirements for fifth generation and beyond uh, fighter programs in order to avoid further cost impacts, uh, schedule delays, and possible cyber uh, intrusions or, or vulnerabilities. To this effect, last year, Section 1649 of the NDAA uh, required an evaluation of cyber vulnerabilities in the F-35 uh, aircraft and support systems. Can you uh, explain how the current version of the F-35 software addresses security vulnerabilities found in previous versions? Uh, do known vulnerabilities from uh, previous software versions uh, remain unpatched? And are there mitigation techniques for vulnerabilities that remain, whether uh, inherited from previous iterations or new uh, to the current uh, version? As I said before, Congressman, um, if you look at the airplane itself, um, I think you will find that the architecture of the airplane when it was designed early on was um, foremost in our mind was that we were going to export this airplane and other people were going to use it. Therefore, uh, when we built the airframe itself, um, we ensured that there were um, things on the airplane that would protect it. Um, I have no doubt in my mind, given the testing that we've done so far, that those safeguards on the airplane are working well. And the OT community today is doing the penetration testing and the vulnerability testing on the airplane itself. And those reports, when completed, we will make available uh, to the Congress. Um, they would not be um, publicly uh, able to be seen. We'd, we'd have to do that in another place. Um, but as I said, the bigger problem that we see is on our offboard systems that are connected to various networks. And when the system was originally designed, the maintenance system and the, the mission planning system on this airplane, um, we didn't know what we didn't know about the threats. And the threat, cyber-wise, continues to evolve day in and day out. So it is sometimes a catch-up game for us 
to be able to recognize what the current threats can do and figure out a way to get that into our systems. Do, do we know if do you know if known vulnerabilities from previous software versions remain unpatched? Um, I will tell you that there are vulnerabilities in the system today that we know about that we are trying to fix. Can we fix them all at once with the flip of a switch? The answer is no. But we put other mitigation strategies in place to ensure that that vulnerability doesn't become a risk or a problem. Additional inspections, um, the, where we use the system, how we use the system. But it, it is a true statement that today there are vulnerabilities that exist that we are trying to fix. Okay. Now, Harris, do you have anything to add? Sir, I would also add that with cyber, all vulnerabilities generally go down to the weakest link, which means a lot of times it's our, our young men and women that are working on the airplane or plugging into it with something. So it comes back partially to a trainer training and making sure they understand the process and procedures they can follow and that um, social media and other things have no place in this type of an environment.